So this is what we call an ID masterclass. And the, and the way that we're doing the rhythm now is at the start of the month, we have a, a broad um, living in stride webinar on a particular topic. So we have a theme for the month. This month is whole of life leadership. And so um, last, a couple of weeks ago, you know, we had a, a really good discussion on the broad topic of leadership and just some of the things that are really the superpowers, I guess, of the different drivers. And I'll quickly give you a refresh on that in a minute. But the idea of the masterclass is it's for people who have got a little more either knowledge on ID or a real passion to want to have more knowledge and understand some of the nuances. And so we just get to do a deeper dive into that topic. And that's not so much all from me. That's really the, the, the brain power of this group you know, sharing your own understandings, your perspectives, your questions, your challenges, and we all help each other. But out of that process, as has happened now, ever since we started these webinars with COVID, some wonderful material gets built um, from the collective sort of brains trust of this group. And we then share that back out with you with the output of these webinars. And it's just wonderful collateral. I mean, personally, I've learned so much from this process. So um, what I will do, because it is a masterclass, is start with our peak performance indicator check-in. So this is the check-in, which I'm sure um, all the names here look fairly familiar. So I think you're all familiar with that process of, you know, we, when we're in stride and at our best, that's when we bring our very best selves to the table. And it's not just about performance, it's about fulfillment and a sense of achievement and confidence. And it's also about health and energy. And that's why there are people that can be working you know, for hours on end and yet be so energized at the end of it. And other times we can be meetings or conversations for 20 and 30 minutes and feel just totally drained by the end of it. And we say things like that person or that, that role or that situation is sucking the life out of me. And other people just go, oh my God, I'd do this even if I wasn't getting paid for it. I'm so pumped, so energized by doing this. And those situations correlate exactly to us being in stride. So in the chat, I'd like you just to put your number or your comment about, you know, where are you at on that peak performance indicator? Are you like a 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10 being that's, you know, really on your game in stride or in flow, as some people say? Or are you really off your game today for whatever reason? And then we have a few minutes to talk about that if you'd like to just share. Wow, these are really high scores. I don't know whether anyone here does this in their teams. Actually, I might ask that question. Um, has anyone in a team done this exercise or, or you know, continues to do it on a regular basis and, and has Paul, a different score? I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, Paul, um, I did it with the team, I, a big team I was working with a while back, and the, we did eight sessions over about eight months. In the fifth session, um, the average was five, and the leader was there, was pretty strong, um, dominant leader, I guess, but he took action. He, he was shocked by the fire. And by session eight, we, we, it took a while to get everybody to open up to do this, but by session eight, the average was eight. He had That's changed, right. he'd momentally changed a lot of things in the organization and yes. it's just changed the culture. So it really, it really works. And, and what, what was the difference? Like at the end of the day, this is just a number, it's arbitrary, it's just a sentiment. But when you look at that as to what actually happened in the team, you know, uh, he, people, yeah. what would you describe? It's a, a, a high verify culture um, and they weren't feeling valued because the decisions weren't being shared. So the why, the because wasn't happening. Um, the dominant leader, with due respect to these drives, but the dominant leader was verify authenticate. Uh, he was not delegating. He wasn't sharing, even though he's a great, great guy and he's learned a lot now. Um, that was really what the result was. They weren't feeling valued. The organisation has grown to some 700 people now employed and, and the leaders, the 13 on the team, just weren't getting shared and didn't feel valued. And then the leader turned that around. He's, he's improvised, verified, by the way. So very entrepreneurial. And he's built this organisation to this size over 10 years. So, and and is it showing up in the way the, the results that have been achieved by the team or the business, Mike? Absolutely. And we had our 10-year celebration a couple of weeks ago, and the, the energy, the feeling, the feedback in that room was just phenomenal. And we've done a lot of work around feedback as well and acceptance of feedback. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it, it just astounds me. I'd never really attributed so much to this 
and but really it worked amazingly. So, and I use it every day in the office with Kelly and others I work with in West Perth as well. Yeah. Oh, thanks for sharing, Mike. It's it's part of what when when companies talk about having a common language as one of the key ingredients to driving successful transformations. And they often think about things like the ID as a process because that's got language by virtue of, you know, um, verify, authenticate, complete, improvise, or sometimes people use the colors, you know, I'm a yellow person, purple person, whatever it might be. But this is a really significant part of that vernacular as well, of being able to understand this peak performance indicator concept and just say to someone, what's your number today? And the person can just say, I'm a, I'm a five. It's like, okay, let's chat. Or I'm a 10. It's like, whoa, whoa what's going on to make you a 10? You know, um, it's just a really cool language within a business that that helps a team really rock these scores are the highest i get to see when when we do this together every couple of weeks this is the best i see and i think it speaks volumes to you as individuals that you know you care about getting the best out of yourselves and to the dynamic of of the support that comes from a group like this you know but when you can have this in a team it's it's just wonderful and it really does correlate completely to the business results. When the numbers are up, the business results are up. When the numbers are down, the business res results are down. And, and down can be in the early sevens, you know? But when you get, as Mike said, up into the eights, there's an energy that just electrifies the team or the org. And that's the way you wanna drive. I mean, it's the way you wanna live your life, but it's the way if you're trying to drive success in a business. We, we're here to talk about leadership today. Um, it definitely makes a big difference. I think one of the great changes quickly was that the, it went from a, a group of people working together to a group of people that care and share. And I think that's uh -huh. really important in the team. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Mike. See, so even doing this exercise, one of the hallmarks of a high performance team, if you want to, again, bring it back to leadership, is the sharing of personal stories. It's, it's some people do it once they get trust and confidence. And some people do it in order to get trust and confidence and vulnerability. To me, it doesn't matter whether it's the chicken that comes first or the egg comes first. But I would say to you, the sharing of truth, you know, whether that's in the, a deeper personal story or whether it's just sharing your number here and speaking to it, that's, there's a story behind all of these numbers. And so just to do this exercise with a level of authenticity and the safety that enables real vulnerability, just that dynamic speaks to where a team is at. And so there are times when I don't, like there's a team we're working with right now, and we we did two workshops before I actually did this exercise. It was so broken that I just knew there was no real point doing this exercise because there wouldn't have been honesty and vulnerability on the table. And to me, it was a real hallmark of progress that we could even do this exercise. And I can assure you that for leaders, um, the team may, may get you know a certain level of value out of this exercise, but the leader gets like 10 times that value because they get to see where their people are at. And if for no other reason to, than that, to do this for the leader's benefit, it's, it's just huge. Um, oh. so it's, I'd encourage all of you to, if you're not already using this on a regular basis, firstly with yourself and secondly, in whatever teams you use, I'd recommend it. Jesper Anderson, who's the CEO of Infoblox, one of our best clients, and there's a number of you on the call from Infoblox here, when Jesper pulls his e-staff together, and they were together a couple of weeks ago, but even when it's just like a staff meeting every other week, they do this exercise. He calls it a temperature check. And he just gets so much value from it. And they do it really regularly. And I, again, encourage you all to do it. Does anyone want to speak to their number? I see there's some variations here to what some people have been used to sharing. So maybe you'd like to share your story before I ask you. <laughs> I'll, I'll mention one thing that... Uh, um... There's outside of a lot of the uh, uh, things we've been talking about in these meetings, there's a lot of other things related to diet, exercise, and things like that can really affect how well you're feeling about yourself and your job and all of that. I yes. know for myself, you know, I'm not an alcoholic, but I really love whiskey. But I did notice a correlation between my level of confidence the next day and how much I drank the night before. And I stopped, uh, I, I, two weeks ago is the last time I had a drink, and I've been a nine ever since. So I've been kind of on a roll there. That's, that may change any, at any moment, <laughs> but um, there, is, there are external components about how well you're taking care of yourself that need to probably be considered also as kind of a, a baseline or a, uh, you know, um, just, yeah. just something that's part of the equation. They are, but, but what happens, Anthony, is that 
when you're in stride, like you look at what you're doing now, you say, oh, it's two weeks since I've done that. But you look at your numbers and because you're feeling good and you're in stride, it even gives you the confidence and the encouragement and the, and the self-motivation to want to address other areas of your life. So you're absolutely right. We need exercise. We need rest. We need good nutrition. We need variety. Um, but, but all of those things seem to get better attention when we're coming from a place of being true to ourselves, don't they? You know, so sure. very cool. Thank you for sharing that. So Amanda, your number, you, it's interesting. You, you've now at a point where you call the seven a low number, which is interesting to hear that from you. And as someone who rates as a fairly tough marker as well, um, are you able to share what's happening for you or do you want any input from the group at all? Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, I have been really a nine even in, in lockdown. So I've been keeping it all together, which is good. But, uh, yeah, the last couple of days have been just really busy and I just feel out of control and things are not going according to the plan. And, uh, yeah, I've got 10 weeks to go with my pregnancy. So um, kind of... <laughs> arriving to the to the deadline I guess and and I'm starting to go, get a bit freaked out with all the work things I need to leave ready before I go which is just crazy because I know when the baby's here none of that's gonna matter but I've kind of had this thing of all these things I want to do at work before I go yeah and um, work has been really busy which is great um, we recently introduced uh, a fee for service which is not common in our industry and we thought the workload was going to reduce significantly but people are paying for the fee which is good so we actually kept the workload <laughs> really high so that means I need to hire another person and I'm just trying to get this all done um, yeah so and, and obviously all pregnancy and, and baby stuff on the side. So just feeling a little bit overwhelmed at the moment. Probably because you're getting <clears throat> getting older on Monday. So maybe As that's well. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday for Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that a, a funny thing to, well, not sure if Joe thinks it's funny, but um, yes, I, I haven't been thinking about my birthday at all. Like we're in lockdown and um, um, Joe sent me a calendar invite for Monday morning to block my morning. Um, so I know he's going to do something. And then yesterday he said, oh, are you excited for your birthday? And I was looking at something else. I wasn't really listening. So I think I answered something like, oh, you know, the, I don't even know what's happening. So how, how am I going to get excited? And he got really devastated. He was so upset he's like well you you know I'm, I'm I'm planning something and you know it's it's gonna be a surprise and in in you you should you should know to say the right thing to me because I'm planning <laughs> and I'm like oh no I just burst the improvised bubble and now you know he doesn't <laughs> want to do it <laughs> and so I felt really bad that you know I'm just like it's crazy that I'm not the one planning and whatever. I really, it, it's difficult to get excited about something that's not even on my radar. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was one more thing, I guess, happening. So, yeah. Well, <clears throat> you want to make sure that you're, um, you know, as Tracy just said in the chat, actually, the, the good news is you get over it, they get over it really quickly, but it, it is important, but just be kind to yourself, you know, as someone listening to you share what's going on, so much of the pressure that you're feeling and the sense of being out of control, it's all based on you having such a high bar for yourself. And honestly, if you just lowered the bar, you know, you would have a lot less pressure and maybe just being kind to yourself is a strategy to, you know, take some off your plate and just still be able to enjoy the journey um, of the next few months, especially. And, yeah, and even I, more I so once the baby's born. Yeah, I think I Matt, created pressure for myself. Amanda, can I ask you a question? You you yes. said you were you were overwhelmed or, or and it was a lot, you know, and all that. And you're saying that you're saying that like with a smile and a glowing face, and it's like, and I'm wondering, are you really overwhelmed? Are you just really full and you're all the engines are pumping, but it's actually cruising and you're doing well, but your brain goes, oh my god, look at all I got on. And it's like, instead of when you're really in it, yeah, you got a lot on. That's what you do, you know? So <laughs> I, I, you don't look overwhelmed to me at all. You know? like, yeah, I just, maybe. 
want to change the language from I'm overwhelmed to I'm full, I'm going. You know, like I'm on right now because I think you're a great example of handling it all, not being overwhelmed by it. That's all. Oh, thanks, Greg. Yeah, I, I, I do. Like, like I said, I have been really online, and I feel like everything has. There's a lot going on, but I am on top of everything. It was just really this morning that I'm like, wow. Sometimes it just feels like it's too much. But overall, yeah, I have been feeling on top of everything, which is good. Yeah. So change your number then. Thanks. We'll do now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <clears throat> So, so Greg, I want to I want to call you out as well. You're on the other side. You're a nine, but that's you. That's a that's a high score for you. I don't think I normally see you rate yourself as strongly as that. Oh, uh, it's between eight and a half and nine most of the times. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, it's I, I, if if someone looked at what I'm dealing with and what's going on around, they go, "Wow, you, how come it's so high?" But, it, but I don't rake it like that. And um, I think this what you're pointing out when you do this with a group is that everyone is always carrying something else that's not on the surface that we don't know if between illegal or family or health or whatever, everyone all the time. And when we talk to them and we get an answer for them, we don't know what just answered, like what part of them answered. And yep. this thing is sort of getting a group, a team or anyone going, ah, there's other stuff happening. Let's give each other a little bit of slack. As, as Vera loves to say, my lovely wife, she loves to say, just make provision for them. Just yeah. Just make some provision for them. And yeah. I think yeah. this is a way of doing that that reminds us um, that's not all there is with them. There's something else always. It's it's absolutely right, Greg. It's the story behind the number, whether the number's a high number or a low number or the journey from one to the other. I mean, there's a story. And in, in a group, whether or I should say in a relationship, you know, the, taking the time to hear the story behind the number is where the gold of this really is, you know, so... Um, just just a couple of others I'd like to call out in case it's something really valuable to the team. Mark, your number you put down as a five as well. Um, and I think that's a lower number than what you normally share. Is there anything yeah. you want to share about that yeah, story? Yeah, it is. It's a uh, uh, long story short, mother's 96 years old, not doing well. So Okay. Okay. Well, hopefully if there's anything that we can help with from the point of view of Good energy from this group. I know everyone would just send you a lot of love and care and support. So hopefully that just helps you knowing that that group is there and a positive group like this to sort of be a little upbeat for you. Um, yeah, for your week. it makes it easier. And um, finally, Judy, the, we, we got a lot of joy out of seeing you at a 9 and a 10 for a while, but I noticed your number's been down a little bit now for the last couple of times we've done this. Is there anything you'd like to share or any help you would like from the group? Um, energy, energy is down again, and and that's created uh, business and financial challenges. Okay, it's not good. And do you have a plan? That's what I've been trying to come up with, and the plan is is not there. I have really been thinking about the plan and it's just not there. And is, is that hard for you not being a verifier? Like or as much as you need a plan as a completer, coming up with the plan, is that something that's really hard for you to do? Well, it is right now. Yes, yeah. it definitely is right now. Yeah. Very, very yes, difficult. Especially when you're lacking, your, you know, when you're out of stride like that, you lack the confidence that, even whatever you come up with is going to work anyway, right? So, and then how to get started, and it all seems so overwhelming. Um, I don't know if there's anyone in the group here who maybe has a similar enough ID to Judy or can relate to that that can say, you know, when I've been in that situation, here's, here's what's helped me. Because I, I can see for, for all that a completer needs a plan, sometimes I don't care whose plan it is and what the plan is, they just need a plan that they can work with to give them some direction. I'm just wondering whether either on this call quickly or even you know separately offline, um, there's a way of just giving you some support, Judy. Has anyone got anything they'd like to share? Um, if I can, uh, my idea is very different to Judy's, um, but my heart is similar. And 
when I've been in a place of severe flatness, it has helped me to focus on the next hour um, to, to, and I'm not a planner, I'm an improviser. Um, but just today, how can I play today? Um, just today, what, what would thrill my heart today? And, oh, I should be doing this and I should be doing that. Well, if I don't do shoulds well. Um, I don't have shoulds in my life. So what would be the naughtiest thing I could do today from an improviser's perspective? What would be the most fun thing that I could do? And then my energy goes up and then I can get excited about some of the other urgencies in my life. And that's what's been happening to me in the last few days, um, getting down with the lockdown. Um, not being able to talk to my son. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's like just for me anyway, shrinking at very short term rather than the vision and the longer term excitement. I don't know if that helps. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is really a... What's it, what's it been like after being on a 10? Was, was there something, just out of my curiosity here, was there something specifically that happened that started to pull you out of stride or was it a, a culmination of a bunch of things? How, how quickly did it happen for you? It happened quite quickly and it was when um, a loan was denied. Um, it's been several months now and it just wiped me out. Okay. Yeah. Well, the the key will be the a plan. I mean, I'm, if, you know, if you, I'll help you. Like, I not not here on on the call because I don't want to distract from everyone else. But, you know, um, this is what we're about. Is you know, the whole purpose of these webinars was to help people be in stride and at their best getting through this and. I would just feel I was not being authentic if I didn't offer some sort of help. If they, unless you know, someone with a similar ID might might have a more more precise and a quicker way of helping you. But um, separate to that, I'm certainly happy. And even if it's just as we learned from you actually a year ago, just the empathy of feeling like people understand and still accept you, or, or even that. I remember you personally saying, "Paul, that even that's been helpful." You know, so um, we at least offer you that. It right now. Thank you so much. Okay, well let's let's catch up. It's Gail, can I just throw in there? I know I've got a, a way off ID as well, but I know that if um, Judy was a client of mine, what I would do is I would say, okay, a loan was denied. Did you check what the reason was? Are there some things you can put in place, so a plan, so that you can go back probably perhaps to a different lender or to that person and get yourself alone. I mean, it just seems that there may be a solution that Judy can plan for and work for, and then in six months or three months or however long it takes, the situation could be different. Thank you, Gail. I've already checked into that, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, no one else want to share anything? Let's move on. Let's talk about leadership uh, and do a deeper dive into that. So I'm just going to share my screen here to remind you of what we covered last time. Tell me if you can see these slides. Can you see the slide? Yep, great, thanks. So where I want to go to is here. So what we talked about last time was in terms of being, you know, the place you ultimately want to come from in terms of, you know, injecting you at your best, depending on what your drives are, we just had a very simple model of what, what, would, what would sort of light you up. And, and we, there we are with Judy talking about not having a plan as a completer. And we also talked about your kryptonite, you know, the things that would trip you up and almost be like paralyzing. So what I wanted to do today was dig into how do you get a purpose? How do you get a picture, a plan, or explore possibilities when you, depending on what your drives are? Because it's one thing to put this up, but what occurred to me was 
you know, even when it comes to some, you know, we're talking now about, say we're talking to an authenticator about, well, you need a picture. And they go, well, how do I get a picture? And I thought it'd be really cool to use the brain power of this group to share from your own experience, but link to your ID. How do you get each of these four things so people can make this actionable? Because it, it, it's not as simple. I find it, in fact, I've found this challenging for the whole time I've been working with ID is just because like a completer needs a plan doesn't mean they have a plan. Just because a, a verifier needs a purpose doesn't mean they have a purpose and so on. And it's if it was as easy as just saying, right, let's invoke it, we, they, I'm sure they'd be doing it. So digging into that a little bit today, and we've got you know just over half an hour to share for hopefully all four drives. So let's just keep it short and sweet. It'll be like you know seven minutes on each. But let's just explore. And I don't really care which one goes first. But if someone would like to, I, I had a few thoughts just to provoke this. I just put these together to just provoke the thinking, not to say these are the answers. But, you know, um, very quickly, you know, if you look at Verify, if they're looking for a purpose, they tend to find their purpose by asking questions. And a lot of times it's the why questions or investigating things and doing the research. Paul, and then, you might be yeah. sharing a different screen than we're seeing. I'm only seeing the Living in Stride whole of life leadership. Hold on a second. Why is that happening? There we go. Hmm, I don't know why that happened. Okay, thank you. So these are the these are the sub points here. So I I just invite you to to maybe think about well what do you do if you're a verifier what do you do to get purpose if you're an authenticator what do you do to create the picture, the plan and the possibility for the complete and improvised drives, and let's just. Share that. I'll leave this slide up for a couple of minutes. Maybe take a screenshot if you're worried of me taking it down, and then we'll um, just get get into our discussion. So I'm going to start with the verifiers. Given there's a bunch of verifiers on the call, when you think about how do you get purpose, and I'm not talking just the big life purpose, although that might be part of it for you, but just even getting purpose into your day and into a particular challenge that you might be facing that feels demeaning or you're not really that motivated by it but you want to invoke purpose how do you go about doing that this is your moment to shine grant <laughs> um i mean for me it's it's my role what's my role in this what's my role in life what's my role as a parent what's my role in my in my job but what's really quickly followed behind that is how do i be the best i can so that best in class for me is like that's my pinnacle. When I'm when I'm doing the best I can, I'm in stride. Um, and and even so, one of the things that I've found challenging in recent years, uh, even when I was a bit younger, was was ambiguity. You know how to deal with ambiguity, and it was all about understanding my purpose within that ambiguity, uh, and then quickly following up with how do I be the best I can within that. So. I think ID has been very good for me to be able to understand how how do I manage ambiguity when I'm when I'm just a straight verifier and it's not always easy, but my thinking goes to what's my purpose? What's my role within this ambiguity? That's good. That's really good. Thanks, Grant. Could I, Anyone? Um, yeah, go. It's Gail again. Could I please ask Grant what he means by ambiguity? Because in for me, I'm not understanding it. Yeah, sure. That's a great question. So for me, let me, let me put it in terms of my my background, my job, my trade is I'm, a, I'm an engineer. So I always like to know what's in front. I like to see, I like to have a clear view as to what I'm aiming for, what's my target, you know, what's the framework I'm using, all this sort of stuff. And if that's not clear, like even in the job I have right now, there is levels of ambiguity because we don't necessarily know what the end result looks like. We don't know specifics in terms of what we're aiming for, what's the objective. Um, and so I my natural response to that, it, it can make me quite uncomfortable. Um, so it's not having a clear view or a clear objective of things or clear purpose. Um, th that's where for me, I've had to work on this whole idea of creating my purpose within that, whatever that thing is life, you know, life can be an ambiguous in terms of you, what, what are you trying to get out of life? Why are we here? Uh, for me, it's about what's my purpose within that, even when things aren't clear. 
Thanks, Grant. Sorry, Gail, I hope that answered your question. I may not have. Yes, I've got a. Uh, now I understand what you were saying. Thank you. It's, it, it's a great point, though, because we, we had a, um, I was in a meeting earlier this week with a client and we're going through their team's IDs. And she was saying to her team, um, tell me, what, what does um, keep me informed? What does informed mean? You know, because she was a foreign verifier. And when they were saying things like, I need perspective, I need to be informed, um, vacuums are, you know, frustrating. She's like, well, tell me more because I don't, I don't think like that. And it was so cool hearing people talk about the nuances of what does informed look like? What does a vacuum look like, you know? Give me context. Well, oh, 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 give me context. What the hell is that? What does context look like for a verifier compared to an avoid verifier? These are the sorts of nuances that this masterclass can really dig into. So please ask those sort of clarifying questions. And the other thing I would add is as you're talking, if you can see how several of your drives work together, because one of the comments I get all the time is we always talk about the drives individually, but if you could combine them together, that'd be really helpful. So if any of you, particularly, you know, with more ID insight can have got strong drives and you can see how they blend together with some of these, um, that would be super helpful to this group as well. All right, anything else on the Verify Drive? Anyone got anything that would add as a different perspective? Yes, Paul. Um, just on that Verify and more the whole drive, um, I think leadership is a two or three dimensional thing where the circumstance matters. A crisis leadership is a totally different thing to a uh, planning come uh, organizational, let's say a strategic planning session yeah. is totally different to leading in a crisis. And for my drive, the whole drive, um, in a crisis, I'm all happy for a crisis. Give me a crisis and I'll have a go at fixing it. But if you're my leader, you've got to let me own it and then set me off to fix it. If I don't own it, I'm useless. Okay, that's really cool. So you're really saying for you to lead, you need to feel a sense of ownership. So that's fine for a crisis. If you're in a strategic planning session, do you feel ownership to engage then? The same, or what, what's the equivalent of ownership for you then if you're part of that group, Doug? Yeah, the uh, planning process is very much a collaborative thing. And there, and there you sharing initiatives, you're looking for initiatives, um, you're leading differently. Um, crisis leadership is transactional. It's you make a plan and then the orders go out and off you go. And there's, there's not so much collaborative in a crisis. It's for information, not discussion. <laughs> especially for a 7643. But it's a good, yeah, a good yeah, point. You know, the point you're making about ownership is a really good one because this, the end of the day, this particular month and the theme is about leadership and bringing your best to that leadership table. And your point is very valid that without ownership, and we talk about having purpose, but if you don't feel that you're in control of it, there, there's some level of compromise that's occurring there from you being able to, Sharp and be your very best. When you feel that the equivalent words that, that come with the ownership then are the autonomy, you know, and and the sense of personal accountability for results that come with that. Hundred percent. Thanks, Paul. Let's let's move on. What about the authenticate drive? Well, people have got you know obviously other drives as well, but when you think about getting the picture. How do you actually create a picture, particularly Grant be referred before to ambiguity? What are the ways that you get to a clear picture? Hey, everybody, this is Chris Copeland. I'm kind of new to the group, so I'm just going to chime in here because I am a 4763. You are. You are. So Thanks. I, don't, I see, it, for me, it's really important to know how to get from A to, a to D. Right. And if I have a path, if I have a connection to get from where I want to be, from where I am now, that's my picture. 
right? And so being, you know, seven, six, so authenticate complete, I'm going to map that out, right? I need to figure out how to get that, right? And if I have to zoom out in order to get that, or if I have to zoom in into smaller components and break down things or, or you know, get to a smaller piece, the, the, the picture is, is getting from point A to point B. If point A to point B is from project start to project end, fantastic. I have a complete picture and I can make the plan. If the vision is, hey, I can get from point A to part halfway, then great. I will do the picture and the plan on that. And as we as we move along, the you know the you know, how to get to point B will evolve. But I have to have that sort of uh, it's it's um it's a procrastinating perfectionist. If you can't see how to get there, you won't do it at all, right? Well, you, and you and you provide a great example of combining the drives. Where for you, you can tell with that six incomplete, almost as strong as the seven. You need the picture and you need the path, as as you know to use your word or, or, or plan. But it's so fundamental to you, it almost becomes one, you know, because it is who you are. The picture is based on being able to see the path. You know, that's that's a critical part. So to just see the end game, but not see how to get there, I guess to you then is not the full picture, the complete picture that you need to have. If you weren't a completer, you probably wouldn't need the path as much as just the end picture. I don't know, but it'd be good to hear from someone who's, an authenticator but not a completer for example whether it's different for them or whether they are somewhat similar greg you're on very different for me um i, I live with that um up down up, down and uh <laughs> i just need to know what do you want what's it supposed to do and then we go do it <clears throat> and i i will ask a lot of questions to make sure i get as close as possible to what picture i think you have in your head and if you don't have one in your head then I'm going to suggest one so that we work towards some picture in my mind. And then the how is um, part of the fun. So you're making a good point there, Greg, that the part of the picture is what it's going to be used for. What, what's it meant to do? I think that's a, that's a really important distinction. Um, that's yeah. That, that fits with the authenticators is what's the use. So if they were, foggy on the picture and you're trying to help someone get clarity on the picture talk about the use does that help yeah well because of what i do for a living i my, i really drill down into whatever word they just use to find out what they mean by that because as they describe the word and the body language and the way they describe it i picture forms in my head and they might be different from what they actually saying but um you know you you the more they talk the more the better my picture is Greg, how, how powerful, when you like that, how powerful are metaphors? Are metaphors helpful to building a picture? As important as breathing. <laughs> metaphors are, ma are massive for me, yeah. I, 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 um, got that. that was very good. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while, but it was very good. <laughs> it's Gail here. Can I just throw something in that might help everyone when they're thinking about this? Because I've been watching all the premiers and the prime minister talking about how we're going to get out of COVID and watching the differences in their styles. And I'm sitting there going, so what's driving this person? What's driving that person? And it is such a good way of actually seeing what people's ideas are. Who's being true to themselves? Who's saying something that they don't really believe in and they're saying it generally with a sort of a backing away thing. And I just think we're living in this time where we can actually see what all these people who are leading us are actually feeling and watching some people, like the health minister in the ACT, I thought was a lightweight till this crisis. And now I'm absolutely a supporter of her because I haven't seen her do anything until this happened and the way they feel questions. So we're actually watching it unfold in front of our eyes. So I just throw that into the um, ring if people are, uh, just watch and think and do it from a different mindset from what we're doing. Most people go, oh, God, not again. But I actually think there's a lot to learn out of watching these leaders. Thanks, Kyle. It's, 
It's interesting for me as a seven, because even as we have this conversation, it's actually kind of funny because I'm not even sure what the question is. So I don't even know how to participate right now. And I'm Greg, I was impressed. You knew what the question was and Chris. Um, so good job for you guys. Because I'm like, I want to contribute, but I'm not even sure what question I'm answering, which goes to this picture, right? Like it's a perfect example of I don't have a clear picture of even what the question is. So it's hard for me to participate in the conversation. And so there's lots of ideas in my head that I'm like, oh, maybe it's this, maybe it's this. But then in my head, I'm like, oh, that's not actually answering the question, but I don't know what it is. So I can't really do anything right now. So just, just a real life example of what's happening for those of you who are not using oh. and, and, and Trace, does that happen because the question's not clear or because your mind starts exploring all sorts of possibilities and then you forget where you were in the first place? It's twofold. The question's not clear and I don't know what we're trying to achieve with it. Like, are we trying to... Are we trying to help leaders be at their best? Are we trying to understand what gets in the way of good leadership? Are we trying to create a resource for, I don't know what we're, it's what Greg said before. I don't know what we're trying to do with the information. So I don't know how to contribute the right context. Joel's smiling. Do you relate, Joel? Yeah, it sounds to me like you're looking for a, for a picture it sounds to me like you're looking it's, it's kind of proving that that uh thing right um and i think uh I, just to greg's point yeah i mean I, i'm or, or like what you're saying paul i'm always looking for a metaphor i'm always looking for like how do i turn this into my favorite one is like like cars or car racing or whatever i'm like oh so i'm kind of like the driver and you're kind of like the engine and so what we're trying to you know and if i can do that but if i don't get the picture if i if i'm asking a question I'm like no nah, I, I can't see it i'm totally deflated i'm just like no nah, not 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 even you're not even going to get me going um yeah so that, i'm totally relating to that and and that's the question you're asking tracy and it's exactly that you're like um you haven't got me on board of this topic yet because i can't see the clearly what the what the picture is yeah Look, it's the difference between green up and green down is that we're, we're going into the jungle with you guys and we're looking for something and you're looking at the jungle and you're going, hey, look at that. Hey, look at that. And we're just going, what are we looking for in this jungle? <laughs> happy. Uh -huh. Paul's happy to just be in the jungle, right? And I'm going, why are we in yeah. that jungle? Yeah, yeah you're, right. you're right, Greg. And there's lots of things I could contribute. There's to, to your question, Paul, there's lots of ideas I have I could contribute, but I'm not going to unless I know it's like on track with the purpose of why we're in the jungle you know so yeah. I show you if, the I, like, if, I, if i'm ever playing like a like a video game or doing like a puzzle or something i'll always cheat i'll always go to find the answer because i just want to know like what what that end looks like and i'll still enjoy the journey along the way so i'll still like you know i, I like oh is that what it is okay let me figure out how to get to that as as opposed to you know making mistakes and doing these things along the way i need to know what that looks like so, so it's it's fascinating to me. I love. I guess that's why this just enthralls me in this whole topic. It's really simple. This is whole of life leadership, you know. So, how how do we be at our best in all parts of our life? And and the thing for me was, you know, in talking to people, they're like, we don't need to get too sophisticated on this. We just need, need like like the the more the more we keep it simple, the more chance we have of actually being able to do something with this. And when I explored, it was like, okay, we talk about the fundamentals of, you know, verifies needing purpose and so on. But when we talk about those words, people often don't even know how to get purpose. So it's as simple today as just, you know, if these are the, for the four different drives and then whatever combinations, if this is what people need to be on their game and able to lead whatever part of their life from a place of being at their best, how do they actually, what do they need to build a picture what do they need to build a plan what do they need to have a purpose and so on that's that's all okay so i have an answer for that then if you want my authenticated answer well, that's, which that's, is that's, i thought i thought that i did explain that so obviously I, something something's amiss in how i explained it or how i needed to maybe keep explaining it or something so it's it's good learning for me too i mean welcome all you avoid authenticate this is just a demo like of use authenticate and the need for on ongoing clarity or or lack of right, Paul. 
Poor, poor Paul, we did it for 25 years. I don't know how you stuck with me. Um, so the short answer, because I don't want to take you any more time, is for me to get a clear picture in life is usually, and this goes to the rest of my drives, being avoid, verify, and improvise. I usually go outwards to find a model for that, that I can look at. So like, let's say I'm doing a people strategy for a new company then I'm going to go research what a people strategy looks like and what the model is, not because I need the whole plan, but so I can fill in the blanks. Okay, that's where we're going. I can get there. Or I'll go to somebody, okay, you've done people strategy before. Tell me what you did. Okay, you did that. I can go do that. So for me in life, if I want to get somewhere, I need to know where that somewhere is. And to get a clear picture, I'm looking for models almost of the world of what I can like do to get there. It's, it, it's the same in reverse though, Tracy, like, um, you know, we, with a, when you're communicating with a, with an authenticate, I've, I've heard um, the authenticate drive being referred to as the communication drive. Like I'll have a team, you know, uh, my PA, she's avoid authenticate. I'm like, all right, so this is what we're doing. She's like, ah, so kind of like, and like, did I say kind of like, it's, it's this, like that, you know, there's, there's, there's no, this, these are the lanes right here. She'll, she'll go over. If we don't sit there and really nut it out and go like, this is exactly what it is, she'll go, oh, I wonder if he meant like that. Yeah, he must have meant that. And then she'll give you something completely different. And sometimes it's amazing and, and sometimes it's like completely off. Um, so it kind of goes, you, you, both of them have their, their absolute strengths and then the other ones just have some things to look out for, of course. Okay, let's move on to the plan. How do, we, how do we build a plan? How do we get a plan? How do you completers get a plan? And I, and I really ask you to think about this as a completer because some of you who are strong completes are also strong verifiers and the, the verifier side of you can often do the sign. But when you think about as a the, how does the completer part of you get the plan? Paul, well, Steve here, and good morning, everyone. I'll kick it off. Um, also, the plan is about getting the detail and getting the knowledge and information. And I, I'm going to expand from a leadership point of view, just throw out a new concept. Usually the plan around knowledge, getting information, getting the detail. And from a leadership's perspective, I've added the concept of having the top view, the big view, high level, and then playing the detail as needed for a leader. So you might say, well, what does that mean? Um, I certainly utilise purpose and very visual, picking up a couple of the other drives. But in moving from leadership about being in the plan and completing, having the detail and the information and knowledge, I found that bogged down, slowed me down. So what I've moved it to is information and knowledge about me as an individual. And what that means is that I've learned to have the capacity to lead and to turn up and play at 100%. Now, if the 100% is not sufficient, that's fine. That's not my problem. But I play at 100%. You talked about a little while ago, just about keeping it simple. So I used to get really tied up about trying to get in the information, getting the knowledge, getting the plan, getting all that thing together. I had the list of items. I had the vision. But I moved to knowing more and building the confidence in that I was enough for the situation and then went off and played at that level and, and moved away from having to get bogged down in just staying in the plan, staying in the detail, because it came very restrictive and finding that from a malicious perspective, you always didn't have enough information. You're always getting more. And I had to stop that and just move that into action. So get into a point where there was sufficient. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? So a couple of things I put there just to point out, and maybe this might provoke some other thoughts. How much do you need the whole plan to have a plan? And how much can you just have a part of the plan to be able to get moving? You know, is it possible to have one piece 
and then get moving, or do you need to put the whole plan together? To me, um, I, I need the whole plan, um, Paul. I, I, I need to, in, in, yeah, I need the whole plan. It might not be as detailed, and it could be that the whole plan is that, um, yeah, there's three or two or three big stages, and that's it. And then I will detail them as I go. But yes, I, I need the whole plan okay, before so I it, start. You're best with the whole plan at say a thirty thousand foot level. You don't need it to be at ground zero, but you need it to be at least see that all the pieces fitting together at a high level first, a bit like what Steve was, well, that's what I heard yeah. Steve was referring to. Okay. It needs to fit all together. And then as I go through the stages, then I'm going to detail it to the level I need to complete each stage. But I need to see the whole thing and that that's going to work and how long that's going to take before I can even start. Okay. So does that then denote that there is like a life plan? You know, that, that if you start from your life, that how everything fits together, even if they were just like big circles, there's got to be a fundamental sense of harmony amongst those all those bigger circles. Even if the detail within them isn't clear to you, it's got to instinctively feel like there's a fit amongst Absolutely. All. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with, with everything in my life, personal business, Everything, every category of my life, it, there's a big plan around it. And obviously, it, it changes all the time. Um, but, um, yeah. yeah. I Thank think you. that harmony and sort of fitting together is an interesting point, Paul. I think for me, when I when things are out of harmony, you find that there's some type of frustration and anxiety surfaces. And it's a, it's a trigger to sort of stop and look around to see what's going on. And say, well, hang on, what caused that? And it might be as simple as something's changed in the overall plan. You haven't been told, but you feel it. So you stop and look at, find it, and you go, okay, well, that's where it is. You either deal with it or just get on with it. You have make a choice at that point. You know, I think that's a great point that when we're looking for what pulls us off track and how do we read that, um, it's probably a good place for you completers to go to straight away is if you're not feeling is in stride. It's like okay, so something's out of harmony. Where where is the where is the harmony off? And you, you're just asking yourself that question because that's a word that resonates so deeply with your being. You'll probably get guided to the right place very quickly if you ask the harmony question. I think it's interesting, Amanda. You mentioned earlier the story about uh, you know the surprise party that was supposed to be happening, and I, I I started chuckling because I think my wife's idea is very similar to yours because she says I absolutely love surprises, but I have to know about it first. You mean uh, the surprise yeah. at Monday morning at nine o'clock? Exactly, the, the surprise that you're supposed to do for me right at that moment when I know it's coming, right? So it, it, it's interesting that we kind of go back to that and say, okay, well, you know, maybe there's some sort of discordant part of say, wait a second, I don't want the surprise. I want to just know, right? So that way it's part of my schedule, it's part of my world, and I can incorporate it so that it's not injecting chaos into, into you know, my thinking. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, um, you know, it, it can still be a surprise. Um, so say, for, for example, if you it's on a Sunday that I have, there's nothing else that's happening, or all I need is, you know, Joel to say, I'm going to block this amount of time. And that's it. That's my plan. You know, I don't need the detail, but at least I know nothing else is happening at that time. And then I'm ready for the surprise. But if it's something like I've got my day plan and he just comes up at 3 p.m. and go, all right, turn off your computer and we're going to go do something I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> that's just, that's just not, that's just too spontaneous. But um, you're not, lucky you're not having any children then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that that's, that's something. This important. child is going to have fun. It's going to be a tennis match watching mom and dad talking <laughs> to each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, for, for us, it's it's going to be more like get out of the way. He's, he needs he needs this is a spontaneity time. This is like you know he's something unusual. He's not sticking to the plan. But then when it when he's you know when he's in a routine, it's like mummy's going to be the the one. Um, just got to play to our strengths, I suppose. Yeah, you'll figure it out really easily, I'm sure. Yeah. Paul, there's something I'm noticing when I, when the completes are talking um, that 
um, I think almost all of them are also down in uh, improvise. And so I'm having trouble sometimes separating their comments from which drives talking. And I'm, I, I've come to a conclusion over the years that you can't and that they don't and that they're, they're always flavored in there. And I think it's interesting to note um, some of the strategies they might use when they're in, in a tough, not complete part, meaning they don't have the plan. Um, it's possible that their down yellow gets in the way of them trying something to get that plan because of the risk involved. And I'm, I think it might be tough for completes to move sometimes because they're, they're like in a blizzard and someone's saying, come over here. And they're going, where the hell's here? Because they just it's just a blizzard going, I'll go the metaphors. <laughs> but it's it's true, Greg. I mean, if you if we were talking to someone who is a completer and an improviser, they still need a plan. But the plan will be one where it's, you know, very busy, you know, as in like, I don't, I don't know why I do this to myself, putting all this stuff on my plate that I've got to pull rabbits out of hats to get the plan done. And I still say yes to people that bring things along and change my plan, but I just regroup to another plan, you know. So the planning need is still there, but there's what you're hearing to Greg's point is people are avoid improvised, almost wanting to stick with the plan, whereas the improvised drive it's planning, I suppose, just constantly planning to regroup all the time with the plan, which obviously when your plan gets changed as an avoid improviser, when you know, it gets changed, you, you have to regroup as well. It's, it's the speed at which you can do that, that I guess, and get back on track um, with the revised plan, not the original plan, the revised plan that, that um, will help. All right, let's move to improvise. We've only got a few minutes left. It's probably under the pressure of the way the improvisers like it. But, but in order to explore the possibilities and be in that place of vision and excitement and buzz that, you, that electrifies you and lets you lead from your best, how do you actually do that? Where, where does it come from or what do you need? What invokes that for you? If you were trying to educate the avoid improvisers on creating the environment that you need in order to flourish, what's the guidance you would give them or ask of them? I, I think the bigger the the bigger the challenge, and this this the shorter the deadline, the um, the more impressive the the action. You know, all of those things um, is is really a, a huge driver um, and gets really gets for me personally gets me ticking along um if something's like you know five hours away uh, then it's going to take me half an hour to do it's that's pretty boring i need only 20 minutes to do a half an hour task and then i'll like and usually i'll nail it the longer i have i, I use the example I, I i was on um sky news um getting interviewed for just about some mortgage stuff and uh the first three times I went on, one of them I was like really hung over. I was, I was out till like 2 a.m. and the, the interview was at 9 a.m. and like had to sit in my car to, you know, I got there like half an hour early and I sat in the car for 20 minutes just like with my eyes closed. It's like, oh, this is hard. And then another time, like they sent the questions and I just didn't, didn't answer them. Like I didn't write the answers down. And you know, the first three times I absolutely nailed it though and I, and I just was off the cuff and it was just, you know, the heart was pumping and I was excited and, you know, and then the, the fourth time I went on, I was like, you know what, I'm really going to nail this. So I prepared, I researched, I wrote out the answers uh, and it was really robotic and that was my last, uh, it wasn't good. It, it just was a bit of a disaster. And uh, when I say disaster, it was just, yeah, it was, it was just not my natural self. And that was the last time that I, that I got invited on the, on the thing. So, you know, the bigger the, the, the task and, you know, and so, and, and for me as well, like I, like I like to talk about it, like to, you know, and, and just build and build and build and get really excited. And um, sometimes meeting a, and avoid um, improvise can be like you're driving this massive truck and then bang, you, you hit a brick wall and, it, and it, can, it can really quickly bring you down as quickly as you, as you can get up. Um, and I suppose that's one of the challenges for me is, learning how to actually go through that brick wall and go that's all right this this is going to happen like just kind of um yeah it, it's a it's about it's a delicate balance i think okay um if if i may share um 
the things that work for me are to be honoured enough, to be validated enough, to be given the ideal outcome and just allowed to fly with it. Um, if, I, if, if a client requires a work plan and accountability to that work plan, I know they are not the right client for me and I'm not the best provider for them. Um, and that's become more and more clear over the last few years. Um, I know that, uh, just like Joel, really, at the third hour, I'm useless, I'm bored, um, I don't really come up with anything worthwhile. Um, whereas at the 11th hour, particularly at 11th and a half hour, um, it's just magic. I don't know where it comes from, but it's magic. And it, just over the last few weeks over a particular um, voluntary organisation I'm part of, something that's turned up because of my creativity and willingness to come up with very left field solutions or suggestions that probably need to be brought down to earth and that's wonderful but if ever my integrity is questioned or challenged because my solution might have been a bit wacky to try to push the edges out a bit then I'm off I'm out of there it's like I don't do that just because it doesn't make sense to you doesn't mean that it's not um, out of a place of ethics or good intent. Um, it's, it's that judgment of the improviser that cripples, I think, the best an improviser can provide. Judgment of the verifier, I think, is what you meant to say. What did I say? Im <laughs> improviser. Right. So um, did, did the message make sense? Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I mean, what I hear you say is you, you need to really fly. You know, when you when you feel that freedom to soar, that's when you bring your best. And I thought Joel's points about the bigger the challenge or the bigger the bigger the you know the impossibility of it, the shorter the deadline, the more impressive it needs to be, the the more I'm invoked. The, the other part I would add is fun. It's got to be fun. I mean, we talk about positivity. But that's fun. Fun, I think, is a really underplayed word for the improvised drive. It's it's such a need for fun. And fun isn't just laughter and happiness, even though it is all of that. But it's even just the simplicity of being, you know, someone draws a few circles and plays with metaphors or plays with the simplicity of the design, the colours of it. it. It just makes the possibilities more able to flow, I think, when there's an underlying sense of fun. Yes, definitely. Um, and remembering that life is a game and business is a game and we have our own internal scorecards, um, as we demonstrated at the beginning with our peak performance indicator, um, creating our own internal scorecards, even for a group project, I find is really good for me. Um, gives me an internal stimulus. And it's very easy for um, me and other improvisers I know to um, look for external validation and external stimuli where the real magic happens when it's owned and played with internally. That's very true. Very true. Guys, I know we've gone over today. Um, so thank you for being on the call. Happy birthday for Monday, Amanda. It's great that you're finishing as a nine. Um, probably take some pressure off Joel. This is good. <laughs> Negative pressure. Now you can just have fun, Joel, and have a great celebration together. But take this. I mean, I know you guys are already at eights and nines and tens yourselves, but there's a lot of people around you that could probably benefit from your guidance now, knowing this type of thing. So it's not just what they need, but having some steps on how to help them get there. And you can make an even greater difference in other people's lives. And, and Judy, I'll connect with you offline to uh, follow through on our earlier conversation. Thanks again, everyone, for being here. Have a wonderful week. Stay in stride, and we'll hopefully see you in a couple of weeks' time.